Okay. So let's uh, jump to lesson one. So use objects played by key to join key strings. So let's first to, uh, take a look at the, the target use case. Uh, we want to merge, click, and conversions. Conversion to Kafka streams in Zoom and in a different kind of window. So here yeah, we want to actually join the uh, conversions with joins uh, with uh, clicks during the lifetime, during the lifetime, lifetime of conversion. So why not use the join API which is designed for the purpose? The problem is uh, um, Applicating time required in this use case is not supported in uh, Spark here. So the window operation I use in this sample got from uh, Spark documentation. It's uh, based on Worker, which is uh, not always in the same thing as uh, So we So it's not really possible for the joint API, API to fully meet our needs. If not this I mean join API uh, that I can actually reduce. So the answer is the update stay by key. So in this update by key API, uh, join of the operation is passed as a, a parameter. Uh, so uh, within this particular uh, within this join function you can enforce the uh, application time uh, based window operation. So here's how the update state by key works. <coughs> so update state by key is actually maintains partially, takes partially joined events uh, as a state and uh, passed from current batch jobs because streaming job is actually a bunch of uh, uh, streaming batch so you can pass that state across the batch only onto the next job if it's not done yet. I mean, if you lock down, I mean, um, if the event lifetime not expire yet. So, with this one, I mean, th this is exactly what we want to do. And uh, and actually, I mean, any um, free time based join should be should be using I mean, this uh, update state by key uh, API instead of uh, joining. Uh, I'm not sure how many people here actually write a stream application. Uh, do you have any questions? Okay. So if you uh, no questions, I'm going to move on to the next question. Uh, I'm going to be positioning for Kafka Direct. So the Kafka Direct approach is highly recommended if you're reading data from Kafka. That is something called uh, that's some a uh, single based, based approach, um, um, which is not recommended today. Uh, if you want to do more detail, we can I mean, talk, discuss on that. So what's the problem here? So while we're running a streaming job, we observe that um, the unbalanced position, comfort conditions, and uh, some kind of insufficient conditions. I mean, the date, Kafka data is under distributed. So these two problems can I mean, significantly and slow down streaming job. So unbalanced condition meaning uh, some of the, a few, only a few of the conditions has miles more data than others. So say two or three times more than average. So it seems a uh, streaming job always waiting for uh, the largest condition to complete before it can move on to the next stage. So this embeds the condition and, and significantly and unnecessarily slow down the overall job in stream job uh, delay the uh, in stream job. So insufficient conditions means um, you have uh, I mean I mean the per partition data size is too big. Mm -hmm. So causing the downstream processing RDD not being able to keep up with the incoming data. So, so what's the solution here? So of course, you can use I mean, the streaming uh, API complete condition. So you can get new condition and shuffle it, reshuffle it. After, after you read the update from the 
this turns out to be inefficient. We wait and see uh, some side by side comparison later. So we come up with this uh, solution called Kalevi condition. Meaning, if the a partition size is too big, we're going to split into multiple additive additives. So I'm uh, actually writing there are some multiple tasks, I mean, uh, reading data from a single large addition. So we get better distribution at the right now. So this repartition is uh, on the uh, topic base. So we, we, because uh, different topic can have different tracking patterns. So we have to, uh, so this is the configure. Once you configure it, we can see the uh, we actually talk, uh, talk about this with one of the leaders uh, in this part of the So uh, we'll find Jira, this one, to, uh, to deal with this issue. So let's take some, take a look at uh, some side-by-side uh, -side comparison. So we, we run the uh, side-by-side -side job, one with dynamic repetition, one with I mean, the native repetition API. So without that dynamic repetition, so you, you can, uh, sorry about the, the graph is not very clear, but you can barely see the lines above the threshold, which is the terminating time, uh, time job interval. Meaning the job cannot finish within the <coughs> two job interval. So you, you get the delay piled up. Uh, it actually takes more than, I mean, average in three minutes of time to finish. So after we apply this dynamic repetition, so you can see the average in present in time, the job cut. So the job can finish within the job interval, which is two minutes. So it turns out it's, uh, this, I mean, repetition works pretty good. Uh, because we understand, because, because we understand the problem is because uh, the start streaming has some dependency. So it do one, 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 one to one value between addition, addition, and couple of additions. So that limits the limits the I mean the computing power. So we, we have the computing power, but this lack I mean, of dependency not being able to use benefit from that power. Okay, these are the two short lessons we learned. Quick question: If if one consumer is reading from uh, the same partition, like multiple consumers are reading from the same partition, yeah. um, don't they are they reading the full data set, <coughs> or mm, or they are uh, what, how come they are not overlapping on the offsets? They read from different uh, offset range. Yeah, there's a there's a there's a uh, receive approach with the web approach. Because it's a DWA approach, so basically by default, Receiver each partition is read by one task. I see. So not like a receive approach. Receiver will have the offset coordination. No, but I'm talking about the dynamic repartition. Uh, didn't you say that uh, multiple consumers would read from the same partition because yes. you know you have an unbalanced partition, so there's okay. a lot of data in that partition. Okay. So to scale out, you said multiple consumers would read from that. Yeah. So are multiple consumers reading the full set or? So, so then how are they reading slice of it because... They're split into multiple offset range. So, so hold on a second. This is a repartition is data is still by one reader, still one reader. But we actually create multiple RDD. So there's more than one task handle the data already retrieved from Kafka. So still one reader reading from Kafka, but more than one task handle the data to keep up. That so reading has no issue, yeah. but processing falling behind. Okay. All right. All right. That makes sense. A follow-up question on that. So each RDD is basically potentially consuming only partial data, but like, like even or odd, like you basically multiplexing it within different RDDs. Yes. So again, a follow-up question. So in this case, the state management is within the spark, right? It's not relying on the zookeeper of the state management. Uh, the state management, yes, that's right, exactly, yes. Yes. So Actually, use the Kafka partitions tools which actually use the Kafka Zookeeper to see how the consumers are catching up with the producers. Because the, in this case, the consumer offsets are within Spark, so your standard relation. I, uh, I think there are two parts to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They recommend uh, updating the uh, Zookeeper or whatever tools you have manually. So, as, as Spark reads it, so you may want to push, push it back to the external system. Here it is, and I say, oh, that's a recommendation. 
from the area. So yes, you're right, but uh, that's the recommendation you don't need. Yeah, the state is there to man uh, maintain, taking care of by the checkpoint user. Business part. Uh, but if your lag is still in Kafka, right? Or do you still have your lag in Zookeeper, like the, the reader lag is still in Zookeeper, or is it in Spark? Spark. Uh, Spark for reading. We still rely on Spark for, for reading the from Kafka. From, from Kafka. Okay. Want to flip next? Next slide? No, wait, not next slide, just finish it. It's not guaranteed. There's always a try. There's always effort put in to try to balance the, the producer. But there's not guarantee. Even if you try very hard, you still see it sometimes one partition will have more data. So, so it depends upon your partitioning strategy, right? Like if you're doing a round robin, then you can uh, pretty much. Uh, By the way, we, we will have time after the presentations if you have more questions or things to discuss with Karthik and Raymond.